a lanyard that lowers your equipment. It's a lowering line. What it does is it attaches to your Atlas pack, routes it through your M1950 weapons case, and then to a D-ring that's attached to the main parachute harness. This allows you to have more freedom of movement to curl up into your uh, prepare to land attitude when you get ready to conduct your POF. Keeping the equipment on you causes damage to the equipment and possibly injure the uh, paratrooper itself. Methods is the reserve parachute worn by the paratrooper. The reserve parachute is the backup system for that main parachute should it fail. Its canopy is smaller in size. It's a 24-foot diameter canopy. Its opening is aided with a pilot parachute, and it opens very quickly. Its rate of descent is somewhat faster. It will not bring down as much weight, but it, it's designed to open super quick. So if he has a problem, he's got a life-saving device right there in front of him. Since airborne operations are conducted from low altitudes, every effort is made to ensure that the main chute operates every time. Preparing parachutes for operations is the responsibility of the Division Supply and Transport Battalion. Our process of ensuring that we have a safe parachute is a parachute from the time it's taken off the drop zone and shaken from, to the packing procedure back onto the back of a paratrooper going out of an airplane is inspected no less than five times. So that parachute undergoes a tremendous amount of scrutiny before it ever goes back on somebody's back. During training operations, the paratrooper bundles the parachute into a kit bag after the drop. Bundling the parachute after jumps is the first step in ensuring that the parachutes remain undamaged and safe to use. Once a parachute is recovered from the drop zone by the unit that has jumped the, the parachute, it is taken to the shakeout facility, which is adjacent to the pack facility, and it's shaken out to make sure that all debris is removed from the parachute and they attempt to remove any tangles uh, in the suspension lines in order that when the parachute comes to us, it's able to be packed uh, with ease. Uh, once it's through being shaken out, they send it to our, the pack facility and it is then inspected by a, a parachute rigger and packed. The PAC facility at Fort Bragg is the largest of its kind in the U.S. Armed Forces. The paratroopers' safety is the platoon's key concern. There's one parachute rigger that packs the parachute. Once it has been packed by that rigger, then it goes to a final inspector who gives it a final inspection. So basically what you have is one soldier packing the parachute and two additional parachute riggers that are inspecting it while he or she is packing it. There's a log record book that is attached to every parachute and it identifies the serial number of the parachute and of the deployment bag and the packer who packs the chute signs it as well as the final inspector who inspects the, the parachute signs it as well. So that's our way of being able to track who packed it. They know that every time they sign their name to a chute that we know who did it so it's a little bit of a gut check for them also. Although the 82nd Airborne is primarily a light infantry force comprised of about 14,000 soldiers, its task forces include a variety of heavy equipment to support the paratroopers during combat missions. This heavy equipment has to be dropped into the landing zone along with the paratroopers. This can range in size from single containers of ammunition and other supplies, all the way up to armored vehicles. Figured to help cushion the shock on impact for the vehicle. Then the vehicle is actually lashed onto that platform and onto those honeycomb stacks. Again, that's just to make sure that as little damage is done to the vehicle. We are pulled out of the aircraft, uh, this opening the uh, parachutes, allowing for land. We have a LAPES operation, which is a low altitude parachute insertion. And this is basically where the aircraft flies real low and the tank on the pallet is pulled from the aircraft has somewhat of a rough landing, but it kind of slides across the, uh, the terrain or the ground. LAPES allows for the delivery of especially large and heavy loads without the need for so many large cargo parachutes. However, it does demand considerable skill on the part of the airlift pilot. The C-130 will go down very low to the ground. The parachutes will come out and they'll act as an air anchor. And uh, 
actually just pull the, the load out. Now the load's on a special type of platform with a special kind of nose on it that prevents the vehicle from tipping over as it as actually drags on the ground and is slowed down by the parachutes. Delivering the paratroopers to their distant objectives is the task of the U.S. Air Force's military airlift units. An important element in division planning is the close relationship between the airborne forces and the airlift squadrons. The 82nd Airborne's North Carolina base at Fort Bragg is co-located with Pope Air Force Base, home to several transport squadrons. Without the support of the Military Airlift Command, we would be incapable of conducting our mission. We enjoy a close relationship with the Air Force, with the close proximity of Fort Bragg and Pope Air Force Base. We train on, literally on a daily basis with the Air Force. Uh, without them, uh, it would be very, very difficult for us to do our job. And it's important uh, that we really do operate in a joint environment uh, because of the close working relationship we have with the Air Force, because of the uh, operations we do in conjunction with the Marines, uh, we really operate in a joint environment.